with all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So first off, uh, who knows? They're like singing really well out here. This idea of the choir, all of you together, and I think everybody knows that one, right? Uh, good old to God be the glory. So thank you for sharing your voices this morning. Um, I have this idea or this dream or this vision that Abram and Nicodemus sit down for tea. I think it is an interesting concept to hear and think about what they might talk about. We, we get these readings this morning, which no preacher is really complaining about. We finally have something we can work with, and this is good. Uh, so this reading from Genesis it is pretty short and to the point, huh? God says to Abram, go, and Abram goes, <laughs> and Lot goes with him. Seems pretty easy, pretty matter of fact. I'm uh, somewhat jealous, I admit, of, of this idea that Abram's got this direct line, as we joke about, with God, and, and that he's able to hear so clearly what it is God wants to say. Uh, it, it might be interesting if we add uh, Abram's wife, Sarai, and Nicodemus's wife to this tea party we're going to have. Uh, you wonder what Sarai thought, like you've lost your mind, you know what it's going to be to pack up all this stuff, and the kids, and where in the world are we going, really? You just heard this voice, because I, uh, yeah, I need some more proof about this, but, but nonetheless, they go, because we know what happens in the next chapters, and what is ahead of them. It, uh, is this man who has got a really deep faith journey in relationship with God, that he is focused on that faith that is so strong. Uh, I admit I admire that from time to time. And then we have this other guy, Nicodemus, who, who goes to Jesus at night. Uh, Nicodemus is a Pharisee, which means he's supposedly got it together, he's a leader, he's got stuff, he's got enough wealth, he's got kids and a family and a job, as it were, and he studies, he's one of the smart guys, and, and yet he goes at night. There's a lot of question about why does he go at night, you know, maybe he's scared, uh, maybe he didn't want anybody to see him going to talk to Jesus, because there was controversy already, um, or maybe there's the idea that he is studying at night. He's put the kids and the wife to bed, and so he's got the oil lamp lit, and that's when uh, they do their study, which is a conceivable theory. And so he goes to Jesus while Jesus is doing the same thing and studying, and tries to find out what it's all about. He's a seeker, like the rest of us. I've got my list of things to ask if I had that uh, direct line to Jesus, why a lot of things happen and how that is. And Jesus tells him, uh, you know, yeah, you've got all this stuff. What? I don't know why you don't understand. Oh, it's because uh, you've forgotten this whole relationship part, this whole spirit part, this whole connection part. You've got all this stuff in your head, uh, but you're forgetting the feeling part. His wife probably could have told him Jesus that. Uh, so I, I, I like these two guys together and what they had to share and learn from each other. And I read this story this week, I'll share with you and, and keep unpacking this for us. There's this woman who, like Nicodemus, is trying to figure out the meaning of life. And so she starts asking people what that is and, and she studies history and philosophy and psychology and she's really one of those smart people She's finding other smart people saying, how do, how do we figure this out? What is the meaning of life? She starts setting off in the world, going to these different places, and they say, oh, there's this one guy, this one guy that can help you answer the meaning of life. She goes to South America, to India, everywhere she goes, they keep telling her there's this one guy. They just don't know where he lives. <laughs> so she keeps searching, and finally she, she gets deep into the Himalayas, Someone tells her how to reach this house. She climbs it and uh, gets up to this house perched on the side of a mountain. She finally knocks there with her knuckles, so cold they hardly worked, and this voice on the other side of the door says, yes. And this kind of
tiny little man opened the door and she felt she would die of happiness. She had found this guy who was going to give her the answer. I've come halfway around the world, she says, to ask you this one question, what is the meaning of life? And the guy says, please come in and have some tea. No, she says, I mean, no thank you, I've come all this way, I really just want the answer to this question. Won't you tell me what the meaning is life? And he says, we shall have some tea. So she gives up, comes inside, figures she is thirsty after a while, and so when he finishes brewing the tea, she catches her breath, and she tells him about the journey and all the people she has met on the way, all the places she has been. The old man listened, which was just as well, because she had so much to say, and and as she talked, he places the teacup, this fragile teacup, in her hand and starts to pour. She was so busy talking that she did not notice when the teacup was full. So the old man kept pouring until the tea ran over the sides of the cup and spilled to the floor in a steaming waterfall. What are you doing, she says, as the tea burned her hand. It is full. Can't you see that? Stop. There's no more room. Just so, said the man, you come here wanting something from me, but what am I to do? There is no room in your cup. Come back when it is empty, and we will talk. Seems that uh, Jesus, you know, is pouring tea all over this visitor's hand, and Nicodemus had all of the gallons of answers available to him, except for this experience, this moment of new birth, and he could leave all his answers lying there in puddles on the floor. We're in this uh, season of Lent, and I'm, I have confessed this before, it's not really my thing, uh, it's not what I look forward to every year, uh, so much so that this morning I went to put the green stole on, and luckily we have Deacon Linda who says, I know it's purple this morning, Stuart. Uh, it, it sometimes has this um, effect of people have been saying, oh, you're going to be penitent and, and suffer through Lent. And, and I have a different perspective of that, and, and these readings have, have helped me this week. Because if you're like Abraham, Abram, who becomes Abraham, uh, perhaps for Lent you need to do some study. If you're one of those people of great faith that has got the direct line to Jesus, that is terrific, and the rest of us need your help. So during Lent, um, maybe that's your job. Or maybe your job is to, to read up and, and study. And maybe that is your call for the season of Lent. Or maybe you are like Nicodemus and too much in your head, and you need to let go of some of those things so that something else might fill it up, that you might be reborn anew by the Spirit, that you might experience Jesus in a different way. It is what uh, God does in the cross. God comes and loves us and is in relationship with us. But God is also giving and sharing of that faith journey, always sacrificing so much that he loves us, that he dies on the cross for us. But then there is the relationship with one another that we are called to and our differences to um, explain what all this means for us. In our Wednesday evening Lenten series, we studied the Ten Commandments, and I was like, oh my God, this is going to be boring, David. I can't believe we're doing this. And uh, we, we looked at the Ten Commandments, and we started talking, and these 20 or 30 of us of very differing backgrounds and opinions, and we started sharing, and, and we had broken bread together, some really good bread and fried chicken, which always helps uh, dialogue. And, and all of a sudden, we were with one another, learning from each other, letting go of ways we had thought about things, learning from someone else their story, and the, the Ten Commandments came alive. I, I didn't know that was going to happen. The law, by the Spirit of all of us and the Holy Spirit, came into reality and showed us God's grace in ways we never expected. So this Lent, um, I don't know, come to the tea party where there's Nicodemus and there's... Uh, Abram and Sarai and their wives and their friends, those who have gone before us in strong relationship with God with lots to teach us. And there are the rest of us seeking 
May you um, empty your cup so that God may fill it with abundant grace and love.